All right, so we are live. Um, we are here with uh, John Baker of uh, Scuba Johns and The Real, uh, the recreational technical shop down in South Carolina. Uh, thanks for joining us, John. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So uh, we're just going to talk about a bunch of general stuff today, uh, talk about some philosophies of training. Um, I believe you have some, possibly. Uh, and, I think I have two. Okay, that works. Uh, <laughs> and just talk about uh, some, of the, some of the diving you plan to do or are planning and doing how you're getting through this whole thing. So um, how are you and the family doing? We're doing good. We're just trying to wait it out at home, um, trying to be creative. Uh, so it's not that big of a difference for us. Um, uh, my wife homeschools both of our kids. So uh, because we work every weekend and we wouldn't be able to see them because of, you know, the dive business. So I get to spend a lot of time with them during the week anyway. So um, it wasn't a giant adjustment for kids coming home from school or anything like that. So um, and I'm kind of like a homebody anyway. So uh, if I'm not out diving or. Uh, working at my shop, I'm normally just out. Nice. Um, Shannon Cook says hello. Oh, wait, no, something about unicorns. Oh, goodness. <laughs> What's up, Shannon? <laughs> so Shannon's on here. Uh, um, so, uh, let me get rid of your logo here really quick so we can chat big to each other. There we are. Oh, I want to be a make nice break. There we are. So, um, uh, how did you? get into diving in general let's go ahead and get that one out of here right away um so when i was 12 years old um uh it was all about fishing for me when i first started i grew up in the country in lancaster south carolina and i was really bad at fishing and i thought that maybe if i could have a gun underwater i might could do better and uh so I started in like neighbor's ponds, like no visibility with little short spear guns and stuff like that. Uh, and it just kind of uh, snowballed from there to when I went to college, uh, ended up um, working for a dive shop, working my way up through Dive Master and, uh, and the rest was just kind of history. Um, uh, started a dive shop and I've uh, been doing that full time now for 11 years. Nice. Great. We will, uh, we'll come back and hit those topics, but, um, yeah. I was thinking of a question that I needed to ask you, and Sean Harrison brought it up also. So <laughs> how, how long has it taken you to acquire the beard you have and if you trimmed it in any way, shape, or form recently? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I've had it for about uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, uh, I've shaved about three or four inches of it off uh, about a month ago. So yeah. <laughs> that's that painful, man. Jeez. Uh, I, well, it wasn't my, it, I went to a barber and I was like, Hey, I just want it trimmed up. And he's like, cut off is what happened. So I was very embarrassed. <laughs> I felt like my manhood was taken from me. So it was yeah. a difficult time for me. <laughs> so basically, basically you became Joseph Glenn. Almost not that bad. No. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That works. Um, we haven't gotten right. to that one yet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so before I get too committed into this entire uh, presentation, and I want to make sure that I, I don't need to end it early, uh, the question is: Tigers or Gamecocks? I don't watch football. I go scuba diving. So, oh, you got no sports at all. We don't watch sports at all ever. So, all right, but you know, most people around my area are Gamecock fans. But That's I, I dive really close to Clemson regularly. We have a lake over yeah. there. Really deep. Hartwell? Yeah. Uh, no, Lake Jocassee. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Jocassi. Uh, yep. Not Hartwell's closer, but Jocassi is really clear and beautiful. So we dive up it's there. A real, a real lake versus just a puddle that they made. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I went to Clemson, so. Okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I'm <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So you kind of went up the ranks. Just it, it seems like a regular story with with that. How'd you get into instructing? What what made you want to become an instructor? Um. I've always enjoyed uh, teaching and uh, my background is in counseling um, and uh, that's what I did before scuba. So uh, I did, I don't know, it was just, I always enjoyed teaching people things and working with, working with people and uh, always seemed to kind of have a knack for it. And 
And honestly, uh, when I first started my uh, um, my dive program at my first dive shop that I was involved in, um, I kind of got thrown right into it, uh, helping with teaching and things like that. So I developed a passion for it early on and uh, it still, you know, it's what I enjoy doing most. I could honestly, I mean, I have a dive shop and all that, but uh, anybody that knows me would tell, tell you that I'm not good at that part of the sales or anything else. <laughs> uh, I like fixing uh, stuff and I like teaching people. So, um, and that's what I try mostly to do. And because I'm bad at the rest of it. So I have other people in my life and, and things like that help me with the, the shop. And so that it could actually be okay and not going out of business. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Can you read that? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Every time Bentley looks at the screen, his breath is taken away. I can help you with that, Bentley. Not a problem. Uh, <laughs> let's do some respiratory therapy for you. That's fine. Uh, so you are a SDI TDI instructor trainer. What are what's the what's your actual yeah, I'm a CI TDI instructor trainer. Nice. Um, did you have any IDCs or anything planned recently, or uh, we had a couple, um, and a lot of the IDCs that we do are um, a little bit smaller. We work with people on a, uh, you know, uh, a very small group oriented. And I feel like people learn better than that. Um, so I recently was out in Washington State. Uh, doing IDC back in November. Then I had a couple that are lined up for my area, but right now everything's on hold. Um, then we have another one in September at Lake Joe Cassie. Uh, we're teaming yeah. up Lake Joe Cassie Dive Shop and uh, working with them um, for for our IDC with some folks. But, Beautiful. That's great. How do you how do you structure your IDCs? Uh, one week and you just go crazy, or multiple meetings? How do you do that? Generally, what I like to do um, is I don't take everyone that wants to do it. Um, uh, like it's kind of like a dive master program. It's more of a uh, mentorship based thing. You come to the shop, you work with students, work with people. I really like doing the same way with the IDC. Uh, I've only taught one or two that way uh, where it was like a whole solid eight or nine days or something like that. Generally, most of the IDCs that I've taught um, have been, you know, with people that I've personally trained from, you know, uh, recreational divers or whatever own up to that level. And um, there's some people I've worked with for months and months and years and years, but it seems to turn we turn out better quality instructors that way, because I think it's uh, a real disservice, not only to students, but to the instructors to fast pace through a course and not actually get the experience of working with real students. And I see that happening, you know, a good bit in the dive industry. So trying to change that up, trying to be the change I want to see with that. So uh, we kind of have like a mentorship to become an instructor. Um, so uh, they generally work with us for several months, if not a year or two before. Um, yep. that's, so, uh, I just, I think it's a, a better way, at least, at least for me. So. I 100% agree. That's how, I mean, I, I get it. People like to go to a location and get it done. That's what I did. Um, but watching the instructors that, um we pr we can develop uh is so much better when we can start them we start try to start them in like january so they see all the pool and it's slow and they can kind of figure out what's going on and then it starts to pick up pick up pick up pick up and then you just go like crazy during the summer and they get to see all the parts of it but they've been prepped for it um which, right. which is excellent um yeah, that's the, i think that's the way so, but, uh, yes. you you did get a compliment. Who is this? He's so hot. Oh, hey, Joseph. Yeah. Well, this I am um, newly uh, the, um, the South Carolina chapter president president of the Handsome Cave Diver Association Club. So. Ooh, I was not aware that this was this club existed. There's an exploration club for just handsome people. Um, yeah. Handsome Cave Diving Association. It was founded by John Bentley. And uh, I became a member today. So, uh, uh, facial hair is a requirement. So, yeah. I, I like it. That's excellent. Um, I would love to join, but one, I am not a cave diver as of yet. I might have convinced my wife to let me do this. We're, we're working on this whole thing. Uh, <laughs> the more I say it on here, the more I think she's going to let me do it. And then, uh, 
where wearing an N95 mask, I am not allowed to have a mask or have a beard right now. But uh, and again, the wife doesn't like that either. I got to figure this whole thing out. Uh, I can't cave dive and I can't have a beard right now. So. <laughs> we'll work it out. We'll work it out. We'll make an exception. So all right, fair enough. That works for me. I like it. Uh, <laughs> So open water students, how do you do your open water classes? What, you know, there are certain things that you, tr that you really are passionate about when you're teaching brand new students. So our dive shops policy is no more than four students per one instructor. Um, uh, basically we do the online training thing, then we bring them in for classrooms and things like that. But uh, um, as far as in water, in water training, no more than four students per one instructor. Um, and we find, I, I don't know, like in my uh, previous experiences, my other job, but we found that like working with small groups of people seem to turn out better quality divers. We generally have a anywhere from 100 to 130 minutes of underwater time for an open water course. Um, uh, not always just four dives, uh, generally more. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, we try to, you know, just turn out a good product. We don't want any accidents. We, we want people comfortable. What we found, um, cause I, I mean, I gotta say, I mean, I've been doing this 11 years and when I first started, you know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what in the world I was doing, you know, and that's another reason I think I train instructors this way. Um, you know, it wasn't always about turning people out fast, but I, I, I realized that, uh, if I, if I slow down, we take our time, we create good students. They're more comfortable with the sport and, when they're more comfortable with the sport, they're, they stick with it, um, and, and they're good divers. So uh, that's that's kind of how we structure the course: is uh, you know small groups and lots of underwater time. Try to get them a lot of underwater experience, things like that, um, just so we can turn out a good a good student, a good uh, a good diver at, at the end. That's excellent. Um, assuming you're tra training neutrally buoyant from the get go. Oh, we're only trained on our knees for every skill. With split fins and weight belts. <laughs> so uh, this, again, this is why, this is why, uh, I love training with uh, SDI. Um, is uh, they allow that the first skill we teach is hovering is uh, in four foot of water, and uh, we work with them. Then we teach every skill from that position, and we're not ashamed to put pictures of our divers on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, we we sell Facebook photos, not dive training. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole lot of that being for sale right now, especially on the side mount forum. Uh, <laughs> so I love that. That's a that's a great philosophy. Uh, I I love what you're doing there. Um, that's that's what drew me to SDI TDI. Um, uh, Steve Franklin uh, would like to know if you are very super famous, um, and if not, I think you might be now. Oh my goodness, Steve. So Steve's my dive buddy. Uh, we, we started technical diving together. We started from intro to tech together up until now and still dive together all the time. He's um, So he knows that I'm not very super famous. He's being mean. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what struggles do you have teaching either recreation or technical? What, what things are you, or is there anything you're struggling with on how to do it or... Um, trying to find ways to do things better. What are you, what are you working on with that? Um, yeah, I've, I mean, I'm always trying to be better at what I do for sure. Um, I think the biggest thing I struggle with is being too good at it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, what I, uh, you know, with, with open water divers, the hardest thing for us to convey, and we're trying to do videos and things like that is, uh, you know, when, when, when it's a brand new diver, they, to, it's hard for them to understand quality training versus, you know, if they've never had training before. So, you know, why do we charge more for open water than everybody else? Why do we, you know, do it this way? And it's very, very hard to convey that to somebody who's never had dive training or mm -hmm. training at all. So, um, and, you know, they see that in future classes for sure, but that's one of the big things that we, we try to push is, you know, all of our instructors do this full time. All of us, you know, this is a lifestyle for us. Um, all of our instructors are required to, you know, take a minimum four continuing educations a year, education courses a year, uh, whatever it may be, you know, it could be cave diving, could be, you know, wreck dive, whatever. They just, we're trying to get better and link up with other instructors and learn from them so we can 
up our up our game so you know we're constantly learning so we can put out the best you know product that we can uh so i think that's i think that's one thing that's helped me more than anything and uh and sometimes it's hard for instructors but you know we can learn from other people and so i've enjoyed i tried to take classes with different instructors even you know there's some that i you know some was good some was bad but i've learned something every time that i can you know apply to myself apply to my diving and pass on to other students and um we just try to uh just try to continue learning all the time um yeah i think you hit it right on the head with that so there's so many instructors that they they've gone one route they go they do their idc and then they just teach 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 and never continue it. they they are just in the system they're in and they never look um they might look internally to maybe do it better but they feel like they're well it's the classic example of the mcdonald's versus a you know gourmet restaurant like there is no if your product is what you get the two pickles or one pickle or whatever the hell it is now with mcdonald's and a patty and the cheese and then it's all put together you've got what you're looking for you there's right. no reason to try to do it better maybe faster but not better right. uh, versus if you're trying to make some badass burger right. you're gonna try some weird ass shit. so right. um i mean i cooked some weird stuff for joseph not too long ago and he keeps asking me to make it for them again so you know, <laughs> it's experimental type stuff and then you, you work out and figure it out you'll eat anything yeah the rum bananas he loves rum bananas i don't know it's you take a banana you cut it you put it in rum and you put brown sugar on it, you grill it and they keep asking me to make it for them and send them the recipe i'm like <laughs> it's a banana rum and brown sugar you just freaking cook it and they're like yeah we don't get it I'm like all right whatever man <laughs> blue is mine <laughs> yeah yeah it's just it's something special um, he loves those bananas, but anyway, so back to, so it, you have to be able to develop the student. You have to, <laughs> Joseph Glenn, very true. Uh, you have to be able to develop the student and, and really kind of push them. And the only way you're going to do that is to kind of look internally and find other people that, like you said, co-teach with, or take classes with, or, you know, uh, just try to better yourself in general, which I think is a massive a uh, loss for a lot of people in the industry. Right, right. So, so that it is what it is. So how did you, were you always SDI TDI or did you progress into that? So I was a NAWI course director when I first started. And uh, so I started like right with, on the map because you were too good at this. So they just open water, they gave you a NAWI course director? Exactly. They was like, could you develop our programs? And I mean, they didn't have a lot going for them at the time. You know, <laughs> no, I'm thinking. So, um, but no, uh, I did that. And um, then uh, a buddy of mine who was also my sales rep, um, Joey Brown, uh, led me to the light. <laughs> and and uh, it really, it changed everything for me. It changed, uh, it changed the way I could teach. But the best thing is like, I could call up there and, it, you know, get answers from people and, uh, you know, if, they wasn't aggravated to talk to me. It was just, it was a great business decision. Uh, the best thing I've done for my dive shop ever. So, um, yeah. never looking back. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah I, started, I started with Nawi and, uh, um, then, uh, you know, uh, just progressed through SDI TDI over, over the last, I don't know, six, seven years, something like that now. And I mean, everybody's got, you know, a lot of people start in one spot and then their journey leads them to a different spot. And, and it just kind of is how that, um, how that goes. Uh, I started with PADI and, and progressed from there uh, throughout. And, uh, you know, you see a lot of different people go from one spot to another. We just happen to have a commonality with the SDI, TDI thing. I mean, we got the same bug. Apparently we did instructor training workshops around the same time period. So Beautiful. <laughs> just the <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive cup I own. I was about to say the exact same thing. It was a really expensive. <laughs> oh, <that's another> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I it's it is the exact same price for me, and I had to live for a week with Glenn. Oh my! In the same house. You have to have counseling. Uh, yeah. Frequently, <laughs> <laughs> we have a group counsel. Oh god. Uh, so. Uh, too funny. I mean, I just enjoyed that like crazy. Uh, my 10 year old, uh, my, my daughter is turning 10 in first weekend in May. And as soon as this opens back up, I think we're going to go down to headquarters and go to Blue Heron Bridge to uh, finalize her certification um, as long as she gets her stuff done. 
So good. Um, <laughs> uh, Derek Ferguson is on here. I don't know if you know Derek or not. Um, there is. Oh God! If I wish I knew he was on here, I uh, I'll, I had a picture. I'll post it afterwards. I think I posted in the comments of uh, we were doing the rescue, and there's a picture of me doing a rescue. The rescue breasts on him, and it looks like we're making out in the water. <laughs> um, it's pretty funny. Um, him and his red hat. So hopefully, I'll be down to see you, Derek, and get some cave diving. And if I can convince Cheryl that I'm going, so we'll see. And if they open things up again some anytime soon. Um, so did you have any big dives planned? Well, we kind of talked about it. You made big dive plans, um, that you had to cancel or anything like that coming up uh, immediately. Right now, the first one, I believe that we're going to have to cancel. Uh, we're going to get, uh, some verification on this over the next couple of days is, uh, uh, we're going to dive a, a big wreck off of our coast in South Carolina called the Vermilion. It's almost 500 feet long. Uh, this big, the top of it starts around 75. The bottom goes around 140. Uh, it's a really cool wreck and it's big wide, excuse me, big wide open spaces uh, for you can do a lot of penetration through it. And so uh, it was going to be one of our, it was going to be the first trip through the technical company, the real this year, but uh, it looks like uh, we can't get motel rooms or anything right now. So we're going to have to see what's happening with that. So, I haven't told anybody that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Whoops. Yeah. We just yeah. found out some new stuff today. So uh, I'm in I'm in contact with the company we're using to charter and take us there. Okay. So. And John will take care of that later. You don't need to blow up the comments if you're on that trip of with what's going <laughs> on. He will take care of you once we're once I'm done hoarding all of his time. So um <laughs> Tell me about the reel a little bit because you uh, mentioned it. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So the reel is just a different uh, avenue, I guess, to advertise our technical training through. So over the last couple of years, uh, Joseph's going to chime in here because he told me so. He's, he told me so. Um, I was advertising both our technical training and our uh, recreational training on our same page, uh, Scuba John's Dive Shop page. And, um, you know, it just wasn't really working out. We had a lot of people calling and asking us, uh, is that the only type of training we do? And we thought we did a fair share of, you know, advertising both equally rec and tech, but, uh, we separated the two. We have a page just for technical trips, technical training, and that is the real scuba.com. Um, then we, uh, had a, uh, then all of our recreational stuff is advertised on our, uh, scuba john's facebook page and that's been a uh, it's been a big it's been a big help like uh um because we had a lot of parents which i mean hey y'all doing some pretty crazy diving i don't know if i want y'all training our children to do that stuff you know going 300 foot deep inside of wrecks and you know that's just crazy and uh which to me i thought like hey you know i would want somebody who's doing big dives to train under but you know that's generally not the consensus that we found especially for money making so yeah. <laughs> we uh, we totally separated that. I, if I post anything about technical stuff on the Scuba John's page, it's just about like intro to tech and things like that. But all of our trips, all of our travel and everything for technical diving goes through the real scuba.com. Um, uh, we, a uh, girl that works for us, uh, Casey, uh, designed the logo for us. It was a kind of an idea that uh, we come up with just uh, the real is one piece of equipment that you got to have for any type of dive that you're doing. Uh, technically cave diving, wreck diving, anything like that. You're always going to need it, you know. Um, and uh, plus, we like to say we're the real instructors. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I like it. That's great. Uh, so we were touching on it with recreational, with the challenge of finding people that were figuring out what real training was right now, i believe that that's still possibly an issue coming into technical True. that people are coming into some of your technical programs and not knowing what what a value a course might be what what do you see with that that transition yeah i don't know if it's just today's society i've heard it referred to as the microwave society that we want to push a button have everything right now um that just doesn't work for me and in, in, in special in scuba. So uh, it's a, uh, you know, we get a lot of people that wants to jump in. I've never been able to pass someone 
for advanced nitrox and deco that hasn't taken true the tech version. They just, they just can't do the dives. And um, they're just, you know, don't have the skill set. And advanced nitrox and decompression procedures is not a course to learn how to dive uh, in technical configurations or to do drills, skills. That should be, you know, second nature at that point. And uh, so I get a lot of people saying, hey, you know, this is not a required course, so I'm not going to take it. I was like, that's fine, but you're not going to be like, you're going to have a really tough time you know, and they end up going back and taking intro uh, again. But, um, you know, uh, and, and I see a lot of times, you know, uh, and not, I guess I'm blaming on other instructors and stuff, but, you know, uh, there's kind of like a table flipping mentality with a lot of different people. If I, want, I want to get as, get as many students as I can fast as possible, done as possible. And, and uh, it's a dangerous product that they're turning out. So, um, you know, I think it's, uh, needs to be low and slow and, uh, and you have to build the only way to build experiences is time in the water. Um, and I think progression, um, is a big deal with scuba diving. Um, I read this article a while back. I'll try to find it and send it to you about a guy. All he wanted to do was like wings, wing suit skydiving. And basically he just jumped, he just took course after course after course after course and finally got it where he could dive his wingsuit uh skydiving and end up going through a tree and he looking back on it i mean he lived through it but looking back on it he said you know my progress of progression sucked because all i did was take course 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 and never get any experience between these courses so you know your answer shouldn't be take intro to tech then immediately following take advanced nitrox and decode um we uh we got one guy uh, that's just doing really phenomenal. He took intro to tech, then did 40 or 50 dives in that configuration before he ever considered, you know, doing that. Uh, I know that, and, and a lot of people will buck you on the idea of it because like, man, you're never going to get to sell the next class. But for me, it's not about that. Um, you know, uh, I think there needs to be a slow, uh, not necessarily a slow progression, but a progression that you can build experience with. Uh, because, uh, you know, you can really get hurt doing this type of stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, I think it's, I think it's really important to uh, be slow with it or take your time and get the correct amount of experience. So for lack of better words, so, uh Oh, I've lost sound. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, we had very, very similar philosophies on that. Uh, I mean, scarily similar. Uh, I got to the point where I was so frustrated with even some people coming from intro to tech because we have flexible standards. Maybe it wasn't quite up to where I was looking, and I ended up writing um, a foundations course to make and re it's required. Intro to tech's not required. You can come to me wherever, but you're going to take my foundations course if you're going to try and get into my technical courses, right? Because uh, I need to know that everybody's functioning, and it makes it better. So we, you know. Deco, we can actually get into some real fun dives during the course versus just trying to prep you for the course and then, you know, the right. stress of, of, you know, the time constraints and you had a weekend planned and now you got to cancel charters or change locations and you better have the whole charter if you're changing locations or you're canceling. So, right, right. it yeah. is. I think it's a good thing. And, uh, you know, uh, just that progression, I think, like you said, is important. It's going to make safer divers and, you know, hopefully people don't get hurt as, as easily as they would if they just fly through every course. So. Right. Exactly. Um, what do you train up to? What, what technical courses are you training frequently? Um, my highest level of technical training would be uh, advanced Trimix. Um, but, uh, you know, my most popular classes are probably going to be advanced nitrox, deco, and just regular Trimix. Um, so I train, uh, a fair amount and we're lucky to have Lake Joe Cassie. Uh, it's a deep lake and it's clear. Um, it's only two and a half hours from me and you know, uh, it's a real controlled environment. Um, you don't really have to get worried about blowing out, but uh, you know, so we'll train people there. Then on their final dives, we'll take them out to the ocean and make them, you know, do something in a uh, changing environment other than just a lake, you know, but like, this is a great place. It's kind of like confined water for technical diving. You know, we got, we got these underwater walls of rock that just go down to almost 400 feet. I mean, so there's all kinds of stuff you can do there. Nice. So. Yeah, that is excellent. Um, 
I was, well, first off, we got a bunch of questions from Bentley, so I'm going to read them off eventually, but he's not going to just throw them up in the comments. So, and yeah, what'd you say? They're probably inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> that might be borderline. Uh, and I was concerned of, I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of backwoods South Carolina people, so I was concerned um, about how we were going to get to. Let me just take care of this really quick before we get any further. Uh, any recommendations for leg cramps? Oh, um, gosh. <laughs> Scream to be loud and have what, a friend man to save you. When, when did the leg cramps happen? So during my ITW, um, we were doing the uh, we were doing the swims, and later I found out, like at y'all's, they broke. Oh, them. It's oh, a silver medalist from our ITW swim. <laughs> yeah, John, why don't you go ahead and explain that uh, that leg crap there, bud? Oh man, I tried to I tried to do technical snorkeling with my jet fins, and it did not work out for me. So. <laughs> Oh man, I, I hadn't, I thought I was going to die because I was trying to go back into water to drown myself and they would they had to save me for myself. But uh, yeah, we did the, uh, the water tread. Then we did the long swim or, you know, the, you know, one without mass fin snorkel. Then we did the uh, final right after that, the, um, uh, you know, the mass fin snorkel. And I had my, my deep six fins, you know, uh, the like jet style fins, and I was technical snorkeling, and I got what I deserved. That thing was <laughs> so hard, it took my breath. And uh, oh man, I was like, oh, I thought I was going to die. Then I wanted to die. I remember Stephanie said, "Not only could I see your cramp from across the pool, I could hear it." So, <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, that was a painful experience, and that's when they started breaking up the swims over like a couple of days from what I. <laughs> That is too funny. Yeah. Um, what what swim did you win, Joseph? What what did you beat me in? Uh, I won them all. No, you didn't. That's, no, that's and, I, and I won the one that mattered the most. That's all that that's all that matters is I won the one that mattered the most. <laughs> I actually he I, tried to tell me he tried to tell me at Dima in front of the entire international training family. Well, I, I won the water tread. I you know how do you how do you win a water tread? <laughs> I'm going to concede that because I think based on your body mass, you could probably float longer than I could. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> there, that is. there that is. Yeah. I don't know, Jason. Why don't you answer the question and don't make us call Brian again because Brian has already – and if it wasn't for this virus, we would be down there right now <laughs> handling this situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Daryl Daryl Adams was there. He, you know, he, was. he was there for yeah. my team. He looked so disappointed in me. <laughs> Daryl did. Uh, oh yeah, I brought Joseph along because I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to understand you because I've talked to enough backwoods South Carolina people, and I, I was going to bring Joseph to uh, translate for us. So. He's much better than I am, and he's got a worse accent than I do. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I still think it's funny that he left out that he went to school in Clemson. So. Well, you said that. Oh, no. I no. Said it. You, just, you just aren't paying attention. Like normal. Oh, goodness. That, that were, was, yeah. I, I came in second place once when I was in a swim contest. There was only two of us swimming, but I did. <laughs> Dude, it's Lisa's summer medal. <laughs> hey, hey was this, is this the, uh, the Cool Cup Club? That That's the Cool Cup, but apparently I didn't get the memo. You're trying to grow a beard like – John is, but yeah. Oh man, I'm just trying to be like my my role model. It's yeah, beautiful. yeah. Uh, mine's getting nicked up. I need to get another one. I'm not paying for another ITW though. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either. <laughs> no, I was uh, actually John. I was wondering if I could get in touch with John Bentley to see about that um that cave diving bearded uh chair. Oh for, yeah, for you have to be handsome. Oh yeah, that's that call. Cool. And an actual cave diver. I thought you like took a course once and then haven't done it ever again. <laughs> a couple years ago, but yeah. a couple years ago, that sounds like you're proficient. You card. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, I've got the card. Hey, I've got the card. Remember uh, the old Larry Green NACD cards? Yeah, I've got that. Card. Oh, nice. Yeah, you don't even need skills. No, no, <laughs> not at all. So for everyone that's on here that's completely clueless on what's going on, um, in the bottom right-hand corner is Joseph Glenn of Southern Dive Center. 
who introduced me to John Bentley at uh, he's got the Southern Dive Center shirt on. What you, oh, 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 oh Lord. It is awesome. just you guys are a match made in I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Uh so Joseph owns uh Southern Dive Center uh in Georgia. Um <laughs> there you go. I want to know which one of you caused the lockdown so the rematch would not happen. I'll tell you this: much. I'm working in the hospital every single night, overnight, sixty hours a week. It wasn't freaking me. <laughs> it wasn't me neither. <laughs> I promise you that. Um. So I am Joseph. You can hang out if you want to, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to ask uh, John some more questions. So whatever you want. Um, so what travel destinations do you want to take customers to, which we were going to get to, but so I'll, what I, you know, I know uh, there's a lot of stuff all over the world and stuff, but uh, I really like diving, you know, Rex, you know, uh, kind of halfway local. I, I'm loving this Northeast diving. Uh, it's kind of right up my alley. Uh, I like cold water. I like dark water and it's everything I could have dreamed of. So, um, we're doing a U eight, six, nine trip in August and, uh, it booked out in, uh, four hours. Wow. And, um, it was a, it was a cool trip. And, uh, and that's after vetting people to, to be able to come on the trip. You had to know someone or, you know, something like that. Um, but th th that's a real iconic wreck. I did that wreck last year. It was, uh, it was, it was a really cool dive and uh, they pick on me because uh um we go to these racks uh, we did the doria and the u869 and i brought lobster back instead of china so but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a seven right there i got that's, me, that's a redneck from south carolina <laughs> but yeah it was it was awesome um but i can't uh, see, I can't see. he did bring me back a uh, pool tile from the doria i did uh, Nice. It was nice. very lovely. So, <laughs> but uh, another wreck I want to do, uh, I'm hoping to do maybe 21, 22, something like that, is the Ganilda wreck and uh, something the Great Lakes. And uh, it's a yeah. super well preserved wreck. And uh, it's one of my bucket list dives I, I'd like to try to get knocked out in the next couple of years. Uh, it's just a uh, logistical nightmare, a little bit to get to and everything. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's going to be coming down the pipe in the next year or two. But um, we've got several other trips planned. We're doing the Jodry again in November in the St. Lawrence River. Um, that's a fun. Are you bringing dive. Joseph? Who? Are you bringing Joseph to that? Yeah, we're going to take Joseph. You coming too? I'll yep. go. It's an hour away from me. So. Oh dang! Yeah, we should all yeah. get and do it. <laughs> I was going to try to rent a house if the COVIDs don't take the house from us. So uh, I was going to try to rent a house on the St. Lawrence River and. Have a good time. That's a cool place. I really like it out there. Um, yeah, it's a blast, man. <clears throat> How hard is it to get to that right though? Not hard. So it, it's essentially a short dive. <laughs> so they look like the one you in a boat. Talking about like the ones that you do, Jason. What? Is are you talking about the ones like you do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do. No, I mean <laughs> you. He the last time he John he showed me a video. And I don't remember what the wreck was, but I mean it was literally it. Was, for me because we were we were actually in savannah uh john you've been to savannah we were actually in savannah and the container ships come by you know the savannah river and uh we just got into the uh we were just sitting outside having a beer and one of the container ships came by and he was talking about yeah that's exactly what we dive up underneath in, in the river and i was just like are you, are you kidding me he's like no and he just pulled out the video and showed me all the video i was like that's pretty awesome man I, that's uh that's i definitely want to do that that is definitely one of mine for sure it's really yeah. cool like if you're on a boat and ride it across the river then throw all your gear in the water that's about waist deep and you gear up and dive down an embankment so uh, it's, it's a really cool dive so yeah i'm ready to do yeah. it yeah, you take a, uh, a five minute boat ride or so and then you go yeah. over and, and pop up next to the u.s coast guard and then um from the U.S. Coast Guard, you just uh, dropped down. It, it's quite literally a short dive. You just put everything in the water from the boat, but you got to take the boat over there. So, Stephen mentioned one thing in the comments that I wanted to bring out. The only reason we go to that wreck is to go over to Canada and get poutine. That's that's yeah. the reason. It's worth the entire trip, even if you don't get a dive. 
Yeah. Just, you know, so. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's do that. Why don't you explain to the listeners what poutine is, just in case Joseph doesn't know? <laughs> so if you can imagine the best thing ever, mm -hmm. a little bit better than that. Um, basically, it's French fries with gravy and cheese curds and bacon. And it's from Canada. So mm -hmm. It's very delicious. So you can imagine, you can feel your artery slamming shut as you eat it. <laughs> Bro, that's what we eat every day down here. I know. <laughs> It's hard to find cheese curds down here. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Maybe you could fix that after this whole situation is done. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. Get some cheese curds up there. Uh, very nice. So, we're going to get Joseph up to do that. That'd be amazing. I'd love that. Oh, let me put this poutine down here. Mm -mm -mm. So, I got a question for you, John Baker, because I don't trust my sources on this. Jack's Reef, you've been to Jack's Reef. Is is Jack's Reef? Is that what it is? Where Gray's Reef, Gray's Reef. Uh, you've been to Gray's Reef. Is it any good? Joseph keeps telling me it's amazing, and I don't know. I have not been to Gray's Reef. I've heard, no? I've heard things, but I have not been. Joseph won't uh, invite me. He won't invite you because he knows I'll shoot all the fish. You can't even <laughs> shoot. You can't even shoot fish on Gray's Reef. You can't get caught shooting fish. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. were on Facebook Live. You're just putting yourself out there. No, now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I'm on the board for Gray's Reef National Reef Sanctuary. So you could get us out. <laughs> <laughs> no. I am talking to some very important people right now because I am talking to, what are you, the chapter president again? I don't remember. I can't remember. You, uh, the Handsome Cave Divers Association. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. That's the yep. Bentley. Oh, you know what? I think I got to possibly, hmm, let me see. I might have another Handsome Cave Diver Association member. Let's see here. Let me bring that up. Uh -oh. It's got to be Bentley. Oh, my Lord. No, it's not. It's got it's to be Bentley. Uh, prettier eyes, from what I've heard. That's a Uh... Oh goodness, Mr. Oh, still here, yeah, that's the Scott Sam. Yeah, he has very beautiful eyes. Yeah, that is the, that's the job right there. That's what I was grabbing when, and then you guys were talking about the handsomeness. But that's that's the uh, that's the entrance. You jump off a boat. Um, let me grab this. Nope. Uh, is that a state park? No, uh, there's a state park near there, across the right across the river. You can camp there and and launch your boat. Uh, uh, to just, uh, bless, your heart. bless your heart, man. <laughs> That's jumping off the boat and standing there in the river. But in in looking for that, I did find uh, the the start of Joseph's demise. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, that ought to be good. Yeah. Neutral buoyancy. No, that, I can tell you right now that ain't it. Oh yeah, there you go. Exactly when Joseph started to go and go down here. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so let's just let's just go ahead and just cover this right off the bat. <clears throat> Actually, technically, this should be John Baker's demise because I'm pretty sure this is where it all went down with the cramp issue. I should have had split fins. Wait, did yeah. Baker knock himself out? Also, that was not me. That <laughs> was not you. <laughs> <laughs> what? I never heard that. I think Dylan knocked himself out or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh no, it was no, no, no. Dylan did do that. Dylan did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is he on here? Okay, so this picture is <laughs> this picture was the first race that we did that Jason did win. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, I have numerous numerous uh witnesses that i won the big one which was the no mass no fizz no snorkel uh and then he just says that he's the winner which which by the way would 
And then he says that he is just the winner of the, the water tread, which I don't know how you fail the water tread or you beat the water tread. Mm -hmm. So technically we are tied. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. Which is the reason yeah. why we have been trying to go down to the ITW to finish this and resolve this mm. the correct way, but I, someone. <laughs> I'd like to bring up the fact that if you look right here in the bottom corner, you can see Chad Connor and Greg Culp be getting real intimate down there. Oh, they got man. that half paint oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. together. They <laughs> 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 just stopped in the corner. Um, Good deal. And by the way, and by the way, John, we were stuck in a house for seven days, eight days. What eight was it? Days, probably yeah. eight days. I drug my camper down <laughs> and stayed with my buddy. <laughs> it was awesome. I got to sleep in a enclosed trailer for like two days. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, all right, Joseph. I'm going to finish up with uh, John and get him back to being the main theme here. Thank you for joining us and jumping in and saying hi. Um, you, you know, before you leave, how are you doing with everything? Uh, we're good. We're um, kind of waiting to see just really what the, the governor is going to do. Um, talked to a couple of friends down in Florida. We're just kind of waiting to kind of see what's going on. But we're still doing uh, air fills. Um, classes for the summer have uh, for the university have been canceled. So we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. But so far, so good. We're hanging in there. Um, we're just kind of everybody's just kind of on hold, waiting to see what what happens. We've got people lined up, ready to go. We just ready to go. Cool. cool. I will give you a shout. Yeah. All right. See you, John. Bye. 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 All right. Back to you. Nice little guest appearance by right. our friend. Uh -huh. Good morning. <laughs> uh, so back to some of the training philosophy questions. Um, what what do you feel can make it so that you can do a little bit better job of of training your students? What resources do you need? How can we? How can somebody help you get a little bit better? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, so I think TDISD has done a, a phenomenal job in you know the materials and the availability of uh, online stuff that you can access twenty four seven. Um, you know, uh, I do a lot of uh, supplemental materials. Um, I use a lot of uh, Mark Powell's books. Uh, those are required material for any tech courses. Um, and uh, even though they're kind of hard to find sometimes, he's got to work on that. <laughs> Mark, if you're on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I got some coming in. I, I use his materials also. Um, I wrote the uh, Foundations for Technical Diving course, and his yeah. book is a required book for, yeah. for the Foundations course. It's a phenomenal book. So if y'all haven't read that, read both of them twice. So, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, um, you know, I, I'm really, I'm really pleased with the, uh, resources that I have. I mean, I think TDI, SDI bends over backwards to, uh, help their members, um, you know, uh, with all the resources and everything, I can't complain. So. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Excellent. Uh, any continuing education you're doing currently? Cause, uh, you mentioned it about other people that work for you and everything. Is there anything you're doing to try and. Get yeah, through. so um, I've been working with uh, Joe uh, Satelli. Um, he's trained me on uh, uh, my rebreather. Uh, I just uh, switched over not too long ago and bought a uh, SF2, and he's been working with me on that. Um, we did Trimix on it a while back, couple, about a year or so ago. Then I just finished Cave CCR with Joe, and uh, that was a phenomenal class. So, um, so. I've got some other stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, I'm working on uh, cave DPV and uh, some other stuff like that. So um, I enjoy I enjoy the uh, I enjoy cave diving. Um, I'm more of a wreck diver for sure. Uh, I love I love the ocean. I love being on boats. I love uh, you know being inside shipwrecks. Caves is fun, and I, I think some of the best training that you can receive is is through uh, you know. Not best training you can receive, but some of you know, it's cave training is really good. It, it really you know boosted my confidence. Uh, my buddy Drew Dye, um, he's a cave instructor and kind of got me into it years ago. And uh, you know, um, and my wife Amanda, she's uh, really gotten into it and she loves it a lot. And uh, I enjoy it. And I enjoy being with my friends while I'm doing it and everything else. Uh, I do love Rex, the Rex are my thing. So good. Very nice. All right, let me grab a couple more of Bentley's questions that he messaged me. Um, 
Is there a difference between travel wants in North Carolina and South Carolina demographics and why? Uh, where are your people looking to travel to? Your, your um, for, dive, for dive trips? Yeah, uh, well, this is a diving podcast or, or a diving video, so I would uh, go with diving, <laughs> yeah, uh, not like beaches or anything. Like, um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, God. But anyway, uh, yeah, so – one thing that I've one thing that I've noticed is uh, travel's a little difficult with our clients. They they want to stay local. Um, you know, uh, I can get them down to the North Florida Springs and do some spring stuff. Like uh, my wife Amanda's leading a lot of those trips, or was leading them until you know travel's been strict and everything's closed. But uh, you know, uh, that's about a six hour drive for us. Um, you know, uh, the only people that I can get to go wherever is, you know, the more tech people that are willing to go to some of these destinations like New Jersey, New York, or down to Florida. But for the most part, you know, we, we either see they want to go to maybe like Cozumel or Honduras for, you know, the recreational side of thing, which is a yeah. ton of fun. I enjoy it. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, they love diving our local lakes and they love diving um, offshore. We, there, there's a big thing down here that uh, people come up from all overs for a megalodon teeth and yeah. uh, got one right here. So uh, these things are pretty cool. So you got people coming all over to the rivers. We have a river like an hour and a half from us, you know, max depth. You're looking at like 40, 50 feet and most of the dives at 20 feet and you're just pulling up teeth and uh, people love doing that. But um, you know, we, some of our hardest trips that we had to sell were like uh you know, South Florida trips and things like that. We've done a couple. We may be able to pull off one or two a year, but, um, you know, that's a good 10, 11 hour drive and people are hesitant about that because um, it gets pretty expensive. By the time you get motel rooms and book charter boats for every day, you can go to Cozumel or Honduras. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, yeah. So we are in the same thing. Trying to go to the Keys, you're like looking at key, the Keys and looking at some of the other locations and it's like, well, I can yeah. go to Mexico for the same price and, exactly. and that's a challenge you know it's a challenge exactly. to tell people you know i love going to the keys but when i look at somebody and go it's this much they go why is uh mexico the same price because mexico is the same price and it, it's a right. challenge right so um i mean some of your challenges might be resolved by if you supplied them with scuba john's coloring books we're uh, working on that um it's been a real challenge for us uh mm -hmm. You know, with financial resources and things like that, but uh, I think Jason has been like uh, picking out the colors for the color crayons. So. Oh, so it's color by number. That I yeah. that work out much better based yeah. on your demographic, I, I believe. I think as of yesterday, he's picked out the colors. So okay, yeah. Does he go three, four, five, or is he going run the gamut like and doing uh, like ten? I think uh, getting past five is getting on the side of difficulty. So, Maybe like the later pages in the book, once you have developed right. your capabilities, you could. That would be like the technical side. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the advanced open water. Right. We can go to 10. We can go to 10. There you go. Um, all right. So do you require dive masters to uh, bong a beer through a snorkel? If not, why not? Um, we should, but we've been using um, Everclear. Uh, but oh, try beer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll try to tame it down. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I I mean that might Bentley might have figured out that's actually a good use for a snorkel. Yeah, and that's I hadn't seen a real good use prior to that, but uh, that's a that's that's interesting. I hate to uh, snorkel for anybody I want one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Bentley wants to know what we are drinking. I have to work later, so it's coffee. And I think that uh, maybe, coffee. maybe it's the same thing. Coffee, coffee, coffee. coffee. We're coffee yeah. straight up and down. Mine is a uh, Rook from North Carolina, which is freaking, or from uh, Jersey rather, which is crazy. Um, I love that stuff. I'm drinking uh, a cold brew. So, ooh, look at you. I'm too. Uh, more box. So. I think I know the answer, but sweetened or unsweetened iced tea? Uh, I like unsweet. But I'm weird. Yeah. Nice. That I drink is. coffee straight black. Uh, I drink unsweet tea, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty pretty lame, I guess. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Jason Black. No. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, what spark do you try to light in your students? What spark do I try to light in my students? 
I, I mean, continuing education, you keep on, you keep on learning, keep on getting experience, not just classes, but continuing education to me doesn't mean just taking another class. It means you're going out and learning. I mean, you know, uh, by diving and doing so, you know, try to keep them motivated to dive, try to offer trips. We offer anytime we're in the water training and y'all want to come dive along or something like that. We, we let people do that. Uh, we try to make it a fun thing for everybody. Um, one big thing that uh, I think all, you know, I've learned myself and I think everybody can learn is that, you know, uh, as an instructor, sometimes it's easier for people to be coached by people who just started diving maybe, you know, a year or two ago, you know, because it's hard for us to, uh, it's hard for us to relate when, you know, this is our lifestyle with thousands and thousands of dives in and, you know, somebody who's struggling with a basic skill or, you know, with some uh, apprehension and things, uh, you know, I found that utilizing some of uh, our divers who, who, who've been recently certified can help a lot. So, you know, that's, that's, that's been an awesome thing for us. It's just building and it builds community. And when you build community, you know, I mean, people go dive more and that's what it's all about. So. Yeah. And the new people just went through it. They might have some coping mechanisms that they utilize that, that really help them that they can, they can help out with that, which is. Right. So, you know, there's, there's no reason not to. Um, continuing education wise, one of, one of the things that that changed completely the game of how we do it uh, personally is if you look at like the flow charts on the SDI flow charts, uh, I know specifically, I think SSI is very similar. Uh, I'm not sure about the NAWI one, but uh, you the advanced adventure, advanced is not a direct linear open water to advanced. Um, so we get people that come in and ask and say, Hey, I, I want to take the next class. And it's, we don't put them on this linear path. We say, okay, the, the question we ask is, well, what do you want to learn? What do you want? What, what, what's your goal at the end of this whole thing? What are you trying to accomplish? And right. most people, a lot of people are coming in asking for, or we're, we're coming in asking for, well, I want the advanced. Well, why? But 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 why why what did what makes advanced you know what do you want well I want to get better at my navigation okay right. why am I going to do one dive and four dives that don't accomplish your goal right. why don't I do two or three dives that accomplish your goal same with deep yeah and then it puts them into this oh I should learn the things that I want to learn um, right. and actually get educated on them as opposed to just collect the next card that's on a linear path right uh, same thing so yeah so yeah I think. Uh, I think that's a good, I think that's a good way to do it. We try to kind of make a boutique experience for each of our customers, you know, making sure that, like, you know, we offer a uh, free, um, what's the word consultation. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big word for me, but uh, we offer free consultation. So like come in, talk to us, see if we like you, see if you like us, you know, um, you know, some people uh, don't like my personality very much because I like to joke and kid around a lot. And uh, uh, some people, you know, I mean, I'm serious, obviously, when it comes down to that. But, you know, sometimes, you know, there's some students with that I need to put with another instructor because we don't jive. And, yeah. um, you know, so that's helpful during that consultation session and uh, seeing what their diving goals are and how we can help to meet them. Because it, and that's the beauty of doing it the way you said, you know, we can kind of. Yeah. Taylor, Taylor, make them a class, and uh, you know, so yeah, sure. yeah. And that, we we do a similar thing. I'm sitting at the table with the chairs. It's like a high top bar table, and the TV behind right. us. And we put the standards and procedures on the TV, and we sit down and we have a nice long discussion because I'm interviewing them and they're interviewing me, and we're on a long trek together. So right, like, you know, we need to make sure we mesh before we get into a life or death situation <laughs> type. Of guy, you know? Like you can put us all in a world of hurt. We need to know that we both can communicate with each other before we start taking a class. You know, it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a massive deal. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, future plans coming up for the summer. What What are you looking to do? Uh, what do you What do you need? What What do you need help with? How are you, How are you going to accomplish your goals? How can we get you back on on track? So, um, what What we've been trying to do is, uh, you know, obviously. Um, push, uh, you know, more training, more classes for people. We've been trying to talk to people uh, about, you know, go ahead and get started with e-learning and things like that on classes they're interested in. Um, we've had a, a pretty good um, response to the free e-learning courses that SDI has offered. And, you know, that's going to get people interested. Uh, um, Amanda 
uh, just became a course director and we're now able to make uh, instructors in house, which is uh, super helpful. And, um, you know, we've got a couple of instructors coming down the pipe and, uh, you know, honestly, just, you know, more diving. Um, I think that's where a lot of people feel like they get left out. Um, they get their certification, then they're like, they're left with nothing. And so we're trying to constantly create opportunity opportunities. Um, we've got this dive uh, thing hooked up for people and it's super cheap uh, at our local at Lake Jocassi. You can go out for a uh, two tank boat dive, including tanks for 50 bucks. I mean, there's nothing in this world that you can do for 50 bucks. That's that, yeah. fun, cool. you know, and, and there's a local uh, brewery that we uh, head up afterwards and just, you know, it's a great time uh, builds community and everything else like that. So, um, you know, uh, honestly, we're just waiting for this to break so we can get back in the water with our dive family. So, nice. um, yeah, we do similar things at the shop. We do it. We do a social dive uh, second Saturday of every month. Um, and we're actually it's a little bit off schedule, but we're going to we're hosting a virtual one on here. We're going to have a couple people join us for coffee. Um, on on this forum right here have people pop in say hello invite their guests and then um, we're going to put up a video afterwards of a dive that people can watch for as long as they want to i don't expect people to spend too much time on there but just to put a video up there of something and and basically do a social dive um so you are more than welcome to join us if you'd like and, and share it to your people um yep. to get them involved in some way shape or form um back in it so i i have a question because it apparently is some sort of a <clears throat> inside joke that is going through this entire thread uh duke's mayo hellman's mayonnaise 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 what's up with the mayonnaise there's only one mayonnaise duke's mayonnaise oh that, that, that's the answer that's the answer that's the answer there's something special about duke's mayo duke's mayonnaise is made right here in south carolina so we love supporting our local businesses <laughs> right. I like and everything it. else is not mayonnaise it's just an inside joke. So. <laughs> I figured it was an inside joke because it keeps <laughs> up. It's hilarious. Uh, uh, that that is because I'm southern and I eat mayonnaise so, <laughs> on my sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I put the Duke's Mayo sticker on my rebreather. So did you? I did, and uh, you know I have to mention them because of the sponsorships occasionally. But you know, so, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So. Um, we are going past an hour and we tend to lose the audience past an hour. Um, sure. but I have really enjoyed talking to you. Um, now that we both are more clear minded than we were at DEMA. Uh, right. yeah, that's we, it's a more memorable experience. It was a more memorable experience. Sure. Um, <laughs> so it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Uh, and let us know if there's any way we can help you out in any way, shape, or form to uh, when when we're coming back on business. And if you're coming up to the St. Lawrence River, I'd love to dive with you, man. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, brother. Take care. Be All safe. Right. All right.